Hey, what's up guys? John here. The 10-year treasury just passed 5%. The last time this happened, just before the great financial crisis in 2007 and 2008. 10-year treasury yield crossing 5% for the first time in 16 years. What does this mean? It means that investors are demanding a greater return to lend money to the U.S. government because they believe that there may be issues paying them back and there's more risk in this market. So what does that mean? It means borrowing costs are likely going to get a lot more expensive for mortgages, for auto loans, for credit cards, even student loans. Every Everything is going to get more and more and more expensive, but there's a very big curveball coming to this economy that nobody else is talking about, and I'm going to show you exactly what that is step by step. Please hit the like button. When you hit the like button, YouTube is going to share this content to educate other people about what's really going on. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, GreatCreditFast.com. That's GreatCreditFast.com. You can click the link in the description below this video. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item on your credit report, go to GreatCreditFast.com by clicking the link in the description below this video. Take a look at this. So. The 10-year Treasury yield just crossed 5% for the first time since 2007. 2007. And so this is what's going to happen. Mortgage rates will stay high. Most Americans' large liability is their home mortgage, currently a 30-year fixed around 8%, according to Freddie Mac. For those who are planning to buy a home, this is really bad news. Well, if you have bad credit, like a 640 to 650 uh, credit score, you're looking somewhere around 9.1% for 30-year fix. Now, they make a case saying that it's really bad for home buyers. I would take the other case. I would actually say it's good for home buyers and it's bad for home sellers. And here's the reason why. You have 40% of all mortgages that were taken out between 2021 and 2022. 40%. They locked in record low interest rates. 3%, 4% mortgages. Many people say this is an incredible thing. It is if you can afford it through the down market, which we're walking into. I believe the job market is going to change. Oil prices are going to continue to rise. Inflation will likely get much, much worse. And borrowing costs on credit cards and servicing debt is going to get more expensive. So what does this mean? If you look out in the home market right now, there's not that many home buyers that can afford to buy at 8% mortgage rates. So what does this mean? You have all of this inventory that's sitting with these very, very low rates and insurance and taxes are going to continue to rise. So you're going to see a lot more pressure put on these home sellers. And if there's a small pool of buyers available, supply and demand will dictate price. What's ultimately going to happen is a lot more sellers are going to compete over a small pool of buyers, meaning prices will likely come down in a pretty significant way, considering the fact there's only 650,000 active listings in this market. It only takes maybe 100, 150,000 homes to hit the market and uh, and you're going to see a completely different type of uh, temperament here so what i think is actually probably a great thing to be a buyer if you're sitting on a lot of cash you can lock in the best purchase price and then if rates come down in a year two years three years four years five years you can refinance to a better rate but at the end of the day you're locking in the best price and in real estate you make your money on the buy so i think it's actually a great thing to be a buyer right now or a renter sitting on cash or you know building on a plan Mortgage rates will probably continue to go up and that will push up affordability. Student loans are going to get pricier. Think about this. Only 500,000 Americans are were currently paying their student loans before October 1st. 43 and a half million borrowers owed starting October 1st. What does this mean? Two out of three Americans have less than 400 bucks in the bank. So how are they going to make an average payment of $503 a month? They're not. You're going to start seeing a lot more defaults there. And, and at that same time, it's even going to get pricier you're paying it back. Car loans are going to get more expensive. All these things are going to get more expensive. But here's something very, very interesting that's occurring right now. So a Treasury report shows $1.7 trillion deficit. So what is the solution to solving this deficit? It's definitely not doing this with 60 billion Ukraine, uh, 14 billion Israel, 14 billion Southern border, 10 billion humanitarian efforts, 7 billion Indo-Pacific region, total 105 billion, you know, putting the deficit into a much worse position. But here's what they're, what's actually gonna happen here. Here's the plan. The proposal is to reduce future deficits by raising taxes on high earners and corporations. Well, who do people work for? They generally work for high earners and corporations. So if they're going to increase taxes on these individuals at a time in which consumers have less money than ever, what is this going to mean? More layoffs are going to be coming. The economy is in very, very, very big trouble. But you know, they don't want you to believe that. They want you to think, hey, the Fed's going to pivot. The Fed's going to pivot. You know, they change their mind every single day. Here's what I mean by this. Yesterday, they said, Jerome Powell signals, we will extend interest rate pause. Everyone's probably like, yes, 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 yes. Well, 10 hours ago, Fed Chair Powell, hot growth could warrant more rate increases. Robust economic growth could undermine the Fed's fight against inflation and warrant more rate increases, Chair Jerome Powell said. So what does this mean? 
it means that interest rates are going to continue to go up on top of what's happening with the treasury yields. So what I, what I think is going to happen, I think you're going to see incredible opportunities to invest in real estate. I think you're going to see incredible opportunities to pick up distressed luxury vehicles. You're going to see incredible opportunities across the board, even buying businesses, scaling up businesses. Everyone's habits are going to change as consumers because of what's going to happen here. And there's going to present a lot of opportunities for people to make money because of it. Uh, you know, that's what, essentially what's going to happen. And how are they going to collect all this revenue? They're going to be using artificial intelligence. IRS is already planning on it. Uh, they say it's going to go after wealthy taxpayers. Look, the wealthy, the you know, the the CEOs that are worth tens of millions of dollars. You think they're going to H and R Block? Honestly, you think they're going to uh, you know that neighborhood uh, IRS place? No, or the little uh, tax place? No, they're not. They have a, a legal team, a tax team. They have a structure in place to ensure that everything is buttoned up perfectly, that everything is done correctly, the write-offs are perfect, everything is good. And even if they get audited, they, you know, they would rather spend the money to audit. They wanna go after the middle class. And the reason for that is because the middle class will just write the check and pay because it's too expensive for them to, you know, for them to try to fight it. So the IRS is launching plans and boosted technology and artificial intelligence to collect unpaid taxes from higher earners, partnerships, and large corporations, which could transform tax compliance or spark challenges, the agency experts said. After past criticisms of low audit rates among wealthy, the IRS on Friday renewed plans to focus on high-end enforcement, including expanded use of AI to examine large partnerships such as hedge funds, real estate investors, law firms, and more. Real estate investors, everyone and their mom, brother, and sister, and uncle was a real estate investor the last couple of years. So everyone that was doing house flips and you know doing all of these different real estate investments, syndications, all these people are going to be walking into uh, a, a walking into a bigger problem than they were in the past. Fine tooth lens, fine tooth comb. They're going to be going through every single thing, looking at every single dollar. I can almost guarantee. You, once AI starts to take role, it's going to be a problem, right? And so. The agency also reshared its promise not to increase audits for Americans making less than $400, uh, $400,000. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll see how that plays out. I'm betting the opposite. Uh, I actually think that the lower income, middle income, they're going to get much more impacted than the people at the top, as it always is. Every single time, it's always that way. When in history, when in history have the middle class and the you know the the bottom of the financial threshold, the bottom of the financial period. When have they ever benefited more than the people at the top? Never, never in history, right? Even during the big bull runs, even during the big bull runs, the wealthy they have the better information. They cash out at the top, just like we saw in 2021 and 2022. I mean, you saw Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook. He sold shares every single day, every single day. CEO of Meta, every single day in 2021. Right? All of these, all of these CEOs, all of these executives, they have smarter, you know, teams. They have more information. They have more money. They have more authority when it comes to, you know, timing things. Right? They're going to be able to make more money, even if, let's just say, for example, they go after just the really, really wealthy. Do you think this is going to stop anything? No. The layoffs are going to spark even a bigger opportunity for them to go in there and start to pick up distressed real estate. I believe what we're going to walk into is a situation where we're going to start to see this IRS. Uh, AI thing. It's not going to just be high income earners. It's going to be everybody. They're going to go after everybody. But I think it's just going to be the, the middle income and the bottom uh, income. Those are going to be the ones that get hit the hardest for sure. More important than ever to do is to keep tax records. Even if you're not subject to an IRS scrutiny, it's more important than ever to stay organized with tax records, including receipts, support positions at, from past tax returns. Any taxpayer should be keeping their tax returns for at least seven years. He said, noting that it can be difficult to reinvent the wheel for an audit when you haven't kept a paper trail. Typically, there's a three-year statute of limitations for an IRS audit with extensions in some cases, but there's no time limit when an agency pursues fraud or non filers. So you start to look at what's going on. You start to really pay very close attention to this deficit. You have to ask yourself, are we going to spend more money? Are we going to send more money overseas? Are we going to start to send more resources overseas? My bet is yes. I believe that this situation just started. We're nowhere near the end of this. And because of that, we're going to need to you know, taxpayers are going to start needing to pay up, right? That's essentially what the game plan is going to be. Taxpayers are going to pay up. The cost of our money is going to get more expensive. Energy prices are going to get more expensive. But this isn't, you know, I'm not trying to you know, scare anyone, but at the end of the day, I'm trying to prepare people, right? That's the most important thing. Uh, facts over everything else. Facts are what's important. This is what's factually happening. 
position yourself for it. If you're a renter right now, you're gonna walk into, I believe, a hell of an opportunity to buy real estate, hell of an opportunity to invest, a great opportunity to start and grow a business. You just have to be very, very strategic based on the facts. Unfortunately, a lot of people want to ignore the facts. They want to say, we're gonna have a soft landing. Everything is gonna be good. Look around. We have 17 trillion in consumer debt. People are in a worse position now, financially, than they were during the great financial crisis, during, the, during even 1929. I mean, this is all, it's all facts. This is what's actually happening. It's the slow erosion of America. That's what we're witnessing right now. And so uh, you position yourself for it. Next couple of years, you make some really, really smart moves. You make a fortune. You make an absolute fortune. But if you ignore it, it's gonna be, uh, I believe you're gonna look back on uh, realizing that was probably a mistake. Watch what's going on. If you, I think that a great accountant is gonna be worth as much as gold going forward, having a really good accountant, having a really good business, and, uh, and really just, paying close attention to all of these changes because every single day things are changing and they're changing dramatically. They're changing swiftly. Drop below. Let's have a conversation about it. If you need help fixing your credit, we'd love to help you. And my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. You can click the link in the description below this video. Uh, if you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, any negative item at all on your credit report, one late payment can sit on your report for seven years and drop your credit score a whopping 180 points. Just one issue. Don't let that happen to you. Go to greatcreditfast.com and click on the link in the description. I'll catch you in the next video.